Hi, my name is Nasa O'Connor and I'm the International Recruitment Manager for the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science here at UCC. And today I'm joined by a number of members of our staff from different academic units to talk about their programmes and the opportunities that they hold. In the last couple of years, we've seen a huge interest in the fields of data science, computer science and AI. And really, I suppose that's because of Ireland internationally is so well known for being, I suppose, a leader in the tech and software industries. You know, we're really known as the Silicon Valley of Europe and also combined with the tradition of academic learning in UCC and the strengths that we have. For example, uh, the first professor in mathematics was George Boole, inventor of Boolean algebra. OK, the real father of the information age. So we really think it's a combination of the opportunities here career rise, but also our tradition of academic excellence here in UCC. So today, as I attend, you know, different fairs and events and we're talking to students, we're seeing time and again that kind of huge interest in data science and computer science. However, I really want to open, I suppose, the eyes of students and different people listening today to the other options that are available from people from similar backgrounds. So I'm joined by uh, three great staff members who lead out on their own programs, which can be a really good option for students maybe interested in this area, who want to do something slightly different and give them give themselves really that employment edge. So I'm joined today by Dr. Conal Kelly, who is the program coordinator for the Masters in Financial and Computational Mathematics. I'm joined by Dr. Kieran McCrone, who is the coordinator for the Mathematical Modeling and Machine Learning Masters. And last but not least, I'm joined by Dr. Marcus Clayson as well, who's the program coordinator for the Bioinformatics and Computational Biology Masters. So just to get things started, everyone, and again, um, I'm not picking on anyone in particular, it's probably whoever's face is up first on the screen. So I'd like you really to give just a brief intro to your programme and why you think students could consider it. So Conal, if you don't mind kicking us off, that'd be great. Thanks, Nasa. So the, um, the master's degree in financial and computational mathematics is designed for students who are interested in a career in quantitative finance. So that may mean that they're interested in going into investment with an investment bank or with a smaller hedge fund. It may mean that they're interested in modeling for a regulatory agency, or it may mean that they're interested in consulting. And the idea of the program is that it takes data analytics skills, uh, which are very important in that industry, including machine learning, and it combines them with broader mathematical modeling skills and the specific financial background that employers in that sector seek. So it tries to combine those three areas uh, specifically to prepare students for careers in uh, quantitative finance. Great, thanks a million, Conal. Um, Mark is actually your next up on my screen. So if you want, just give a brief intro to your program and what's it all about? Sure, Nessa. So the MSc in Bioinformatics and Computational Biology is uh, uh, obviously, obviously focused on bioinformatics, which is becoming increase, increasingly important to make sense of vast biological data. Uh, it is one of the most inter interdisciplinary fields there is. So this program has been running for 12 years. Uh, it's 12 months long and it has 12 taught modules uh, in theoretical education and practical training elements in anything to do with bioinformatics. So this is then followed by a four month research projects, either in an academic lab or in industry. So the incoming students, they will have a wide range of backgrounds. So if they come from the computer science, for instance, they will learn a lot about uh, the or molecular biology and get introduction in, in, in um, how cells work in DNA and proteins and so on. You also have a part-time option for students who have part-time employment. Great. Okay, and Kieran, if you don't mind giving your insights there, sorry, you're not last for any particular reason. <laughs> no problem, no problem. So we have a master's in mathematical modeling and machine learning, which has been going in one form or another since the early 90s in UCC. Um, and it's been changing and adapting uh, over time. And I think there's a very strong trend towards machine learning in all aspects of industry at the moment. And, uh, you know, machine learning can be used for, you know, speech and face recognition, self-driving cars, uh, being able to beat the world best human chess player, for example. And I think there's a trend in industry to ramp up their machine learning capabilities. 
And we've designed this MSC in conjunction with industry to meet this kind of rising demand. Uh, in a nutshell, our MSC addresses kind of three main points, uh, machine learning techniques and their mathematical background. You know, how, how do they work? Not just how to use them. Uh, the mathematical modeling of dynamical systems and the unique application of machine learning combined with the understanding of the underlying processes to solve exciting and complex problems. And then uh, in order to achieve that, you have to be able to program and manage sets of data. We do this in Python or in C Sharp. And our MSC, I think, is unique amongst uh, MSCs in the machine learning area because you will understand the mathematics behind machine learning and not just how to apply it as a black box technique. And because machine learning is an active research area, you know, academically and in industry, you need this, you know, fundamental capability in order to contribute and adapt to the changing trends in machine learning in industry. Perfect. Thanks, Kieran. Um, just for each of you, if you can briefly kind of let me know, and Conal, I might start with you again, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're talking to a data science student and they're really interested in the traditional data science masters, for example, what would you say to them that like, why should you consider your program? You know, obviously it gives them a different edge employability wise and move them into a different sector. But what would be your answer to that student? Well, I think the program gives them an opportunity, particularly if they already have a background in data science or data analytics, to broaden their skill set. So they will, uh, they will consolidate those skills, but they'll also be given just as Kieran says, a fundamental understanding of the mathematical models which are used in industry to understand financial processes and to understand the uncertain movements in markets and in asset prices. So these are, uh, these are um, models which are uh, the basis for the pricing of financial derivatives. Um, and um, to combine that with a practical skill set in data analysis is something that I think can um, make a student quite employable. Great. And Marcus, the same for you, if you're kind of students interested in that traditional data science, what do you feel kind of, you know, does your program have to offer and give students that edge? Yeah, I think the what, what's really attractive to the many students with computer science background is that is they able to, to learn how to apply this on, on biological data sets, because this is growing so much, as I mentioned at the start, and uh, if, if you're a traditional biologist, you, you don't have the skill set or the mathematical or, or, or um, program, um, programmatic abilities to, to make most sense of that. So, so there are huge opportunities here uh, to, to learn how to best analyze and interpret and, and extract information out of this. And that can have very, very clear uh, applications in, in the real world, uh, you know, it's treating diseases and and and. and tracking pathogens and, uh, and, and, and so on. So, so I think that's uh, what, what many computer science students find really uh, compelling with, with this MSc. You know, and it's a really explosive field at the moment as well, Marcus. I know from my years in recruitment that, you know, every year this field is getting so much more popular and it's so hard to find people with that kind of niche combination of skills. And Kieran, if you don't mind, I'll direct the same question to you. I know you slightly covered it off before, but again, if you were standing there talking to that student at a fair, hopefully we will all get to travel and meet students face to face again. Yeah. But yeah. what would be your answer to them? Yeah, I suppose, look, I kind of agree with Conal and uh, Marcus, really. I mean, what, what we're offering is an exposure to big data and data manipulation. And it's part and parcel of, of what we do, but we're doing it in a, in a context. Uh, yeah. And our MSC, it's in the context of various uh, dynamical systems models, network models. And uh, I suppose it's kind of really we use it in a practical sense as well. So you will get real hands on experience and skills working with data and, uh, you know, plus then this additional raft of skills as well that will set you apart from somebody maybe who's focusing solely on data science. Brilliant. 
And that actually leads quite nicely into my next question, which is all about research. And the students, obviously, there's research projects associated with the masters, but just the research in general and the real world applications. It would be great if, um, Colin, you want to give me some examples of some of the research that is kind of applicable within your masters in that field. Yeah, well, um, just like the others, we have a substantial research project at the end of the um, of the academic year. It takes place over the summer. And the way that we run that is we have the students, first of all, working in teams. Yeah. And where possible, we pair, pair them up with a supervisor from within the school, um, but also with an industry partner. And the industry partner would be someone who gives freely of their time. And um, they're often a, a student who has graduated from the school or has graduated from a related program in the past. And uh, they will provide um, industry specific expertise or data or training in industry software and the idea is that we will construct a research project that treats um, uh, the uh, material that the students have covered over the academic year it allows them to bring all that together but to do so in a way that is tied to a specific industry problem and that okay. way we allow the students an opportunity to, to show that they have um, the skills to apply uh, or the, the, the ability to apply these skills um, in, a, in a research context, but to do so in a way that shows that they can solve problems that employers would like them to be able to solve. Yeah, no, it's really hands-on and industry-led as well, which is a very important piece for, I think, students to take home is that, you know, from the get-go within the masters, you know, you're, you're really looking to the industry and the career opportunities as well from there. Um, Marcus, it'd be great if you could give a couple of examples as well, uh, just from your side of things. Sure. Um, so the, the, the four months research project is kind of a pinnacle uh, of the program where, uh, and maybe the most appreciated as well, where the students get to go out in the in a real world, be it the academic PIs so have a genuine problem, uh, which needs bioinformatics expertise, or it could be in a company uh, as well where, where, they, where this is also needed. Some examples of what they could be working on is to analyze microbiome data to compare healthy people from sick people or to track microbial pathogens like bacteria and viruses and to see what makes them dangerous or to work on cancer omics data. Uh, that's quite a big one as well. Or yeah. in some cases, analyze uh, zoology data from marine environments, which is quite a big field here in Cork. Um, and some students, particularly those with computer science background, they could also work on developing uh, and improving bioinformatics software tools and, and, and databases. So, so it's a very wide range of, of, of topics, but the common denominator there is that they're all needed. So, so the PIs who are the supervisors, they, they really need these things to happen and they they're always very happy to, to get this help uh, and, uh, from, from students and, and it's a very mutual beneficial uh, relationship. Great. No, again, it's just showcasing the kind of broad range of applications again. And Kieran, if you can, from your side of things and from your program, can you give me some examples of the research? Sure. Um, our, mass, our students uh, also take on a, an individual research problem related to the research usually that's going on in, 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 a, in the applied maths group. Uh, in UCC, um, and it's a, we, we try to make it very flexible so that the students can use this project as a vehicle to, you know, uh, to 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 achieve their ambitions. Okay, so yeah, you know, some of our students are more interested in the programming or the data side of things. Some of them are more interested in the applied mathematics, or they might even be interested in you know, more pure mathematics. Yeah. And through this project, we allow them to kind of follow their ambition. And I suppose the Applied Maths Group in UCC, we have a lot of industrial collaborations going on at the moment and ongoing collaborations, for example, with Leia Healthcare. We have a project modeling the healthcare system, looking for tipping points. Uh, as, as it so happens, uh, the project started before COVID when we found a major tipping point in the health uh, system. We have an ongoing collaboration with an indigenous company, Ace Tech, based in Tullamore, that uh, look, at, uh, look for anomalous emergency vehicle driver behavior, maybe related to post-traumatic stress disorder, and that's kind of using machine learning techniques. Uh, I think Conal might have been referring, we have a, 
we have a, a link with uh, the energy industry forecasting electricity using artificial neural networks. And look, we, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, collaborations going on and working with lots of different people. And, you know, if at all possible, we encourage students to kind of join in and help with that kind of work. And it, it, it really does give them introduction to real world problems and how they're solved and the types of, I suppose, interests and demands that go on in industry compared to, let's say, academia. Yeah, I think it's really good as well because they get to kind of, you know, choose an area that they're really interested in. They also get to do it a bit more practical wise and see do they really like it and often sometimes it's not always, you know, I often hear back, it's not always the part that they expected to like the most, that they actually get the most enjoyment out of, because until you're in that practical setting, people's actually own personal skills can surprise them where they're really quite good at. I think that's very important as well. But look, I mean, right across the board, you're seeing again how broad the hands-on side of it is and how broad the applications are across numerous different fields. You know, that's a really important take-home point for any students listening today. So look, I'd like to finish up if we can soon with like just some answers about really the jobs, the industries. Again, I think you've all kind of mentioned bits of it already because, you know, it has naturally come up with industry engagement and UCC is the leading university in Ireland for industry engagement. And we can see that from what you said about each programme. Your programmes are clearly, you know, led by industry and the curriculum is led by industry, which is wonderful. But for the job opportunities, any examples of what students are doing or the industries or different industries are working in? So Colin, I might start with you if that's all right again. <laughs> it feels like I'm picking in a certain order, sorry. I'm, I, I'm annoyed now, I've never gone first. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Karen, I, I'll move to you next, okay? <laughs> oh, cool. No, no problem. No, so well, I mean, some examples would be we um we've had uh, a we've had students who have gone um uh, well we we we've we've had students who have gone first of all into um the there's a company called Quaternion Risk Management which has recently become Acadia Soft Limited. Uh, this is a local Irish company which is involved in risk analytics and quantitative trading, and so they have their own software platform for uh, pricing as pricing derivatives. Yeah. and uh, conducting their own trades and so we have a student who has gone in as a consultant as a risk analyst who's using that combination of mathematical and programming skills and he has actually come back subsequently to be an industry partner for one of our follow-up research projects um, we've had students go into uh, insurance uh, specifically the china china reinsurance corporation um, and this is a student who actually uh, came to us from China and has now gone back and found a job uh, there. Uh, we have students who have gone into the other side of things, the regulatory side of things. Yeah. So um, there's a, a company called Kroll Bond Management Agency. And we, this year we had two students who were recruited to that. And they're using their mathematical modeling skills in order to assess the risk associated with new financial products. So there's a few examples of uh, uh, places where we've had students go where I think they've they have a chance to to really show the, the skills that they've learned on the program. Perfect. And Kieran, I will move to you next because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let, let's, 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 let's switch it up in the, for the last question, the order. <laughs> <laughs> Leave all the pressure on Marcus there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I suppose uh, machine learning is kind of across all industries yeah. and, and the opportunities are there in lots of different industries. I suppose our graduates so far, they've been kind of, a, well, they've been attracted into the, the finance and the finance function industry. Yeah. Okay? And, and make a distinction there, right? It's not, it's not just, you know, the, the banks and people like that. There are, there's a finance function in all industries and they're making use of it. Not to mention, you know, we have a particular relationship with Leia Healthcare and they've taken on people from our master's program uh, and, you know, I think that's the kind of industry that's beginning to wake up to the opportunities that are there for them with machine learning and data analysis. Um, and then other people have gone towards uh, energy trading, uh, software development. And we've also had a, a, quite a few students who've gone on to do, you know, sign up for PhD research programs and stuff like yeah. that. So it kind of equips them you know, for, for a broad range of, of, of career avenues, you know. 
Yeah, perfect. All right. um, you used your time well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Marcus, I'll move to you uh, next, just with the different kind of industries and career opportunities that, for students. Um, yeah, so roughly half of our students end up doing a PhD, um, yeah. so, so doing research. Uh, that usually involves doing bioinformatics analyses or on big data from biological studies, or it could also be developing uh, cutting edge bioinformatics software and, and databases. Uh, for those who go to companies, they usually end up in f uh, pharma, biotech or agri-food to do similar things. Uh, sometimes people go to companies that has nothing to do with uh, biological research, um, but it's important to do to for those companies that have that uh, these students uh, show that they have that they have already shown that they can cross over from one discipline to another. For instance, from computer science into bioinformatics and biology, and having this skill set and this cross disciplinary uh, outlook is, is something that these companies uh, really appreciate. Yeah, and you can see that right across the board, even, you know, in a lot of the research that you're mentioning, you're working, I know, with multiple different academic units and different, you know, and that's how in the last kind of 10 years things have changed. You know, you have people from a lot of different backgrounds working together for a solution for one research project or one area. You know, it's not always just it's not as segmented, I think, as it used to be. And that's something that really employers find really attractive is that, right, you can be adaptable and you can be flexible and turn your hand to kind of something slightly different than your undergraduate as well. Um, look, before I finish up, any final thoughts? Anyone want to mention anything before I finish up um, and um, sign off? Or how are we? I, I, I can maybe mention uh, quickly, yeah. I, I don't think I, I mentioned it earlier, is that uh, when people move from, so incoming students move from uh, from one field to another, what, what I found is it's generally easier for, for students coming from computer science to pick, to learn the molecular biology uh, enough for this program rather than rather than the other way around. So I think that's that, that's useful to know as well. Um, and uh, and also we just as, as Kieran has pointed out very well there the importance of machine learning that we've also introduced that uh, to some degree in, in our uh, in, in the MSE in bioinformatics and uh, because obviously there's so much data and machine learning has great potential of disentangling that. Perfect. Uh, Conal or Kieran, any last thoughts? Are you happy enough with your summaries? Yeah, no, I just point out for, for students who might be considering coming to Ireland from overseas, um, I think it's probably come out in the discussion we've had, but there are quite a few companies, um, both locally based and multinationals, who have uh, some interest in financial modelling. Um, and this includes uh, an area called the International Financial Services Centre in Dublin, uh, which is a major centre of um, uh, financial companies. Yeah. And, uh, who have um, opportunities for those interested in quantitative finance in particular. And so um, there are opportunities within Ireland after graduation uh, to, to find employment. No, and that's perfect because, I mean, a lot of our international students who might be listening today, there is, you know, the two year stay back visa after you graduate from a master's. So it's really important to understand the breadth of opportunities industry wise and job opportunities. We've also been quite privileged since COVID, uh, you know, we're quite fortunate as a country that, you know, the career, you know, the career opportunities are really still, you know, they look really strong for our graduates and we don't seem to have been affected in that sector either. So, it, you know, that's a very important take home point. Kieran, any thoughts from your side? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll speak on behalf of all the programs that we're talking about here today is that these are very much skills based programs. Yeah, you, we do theory. But one of the main focuses is that you will actually get skills that you can use in industry. You Not only will you know about this material, you will also be able to go out and do it and use it in a practical setting. OK. Yeah. And I think that's a huge piece about any master's. When you're considering a master's, you want that master's to give you that practical edge and that kind of experience. You've done a huge amount of theory in your undergrad, no matter what it's in. Mm -hmm. So you want that opportunity to actually, you know, get those practical skills. And as you mentioned earlier and everyone mentioned, see what you're actually really enjoying and where you really want to move from there. Because again, that can often surprise students as well with what they're actually drawn to when they're exposed to it in these master's programs. Yeah. So look, 
Everyone, thanks a million today. I really appreciate taking your time to any students interested, obviously with a huge amount of information on our website, my details there as well. Please don't hesitate to get in touch. We're happy to help you with any queries that we have, okay? And thanks a million to everyone for joining me and helping me out. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you.